This video is sponsored by Xavi. More on them, Zelda merch, discounts and more for all of you later in the video. During one of Hyrule's darkest times, the kingdom was invaded by a shadow of nightmares known as the Twilight. An infectious invasion led by the Usperer King, Zan. In the peak of this attack, the throne room of Hyrule Castle was breached. Zan was face to face with Princess Zelda and left her with two options. Surrender or die. Life or death. But hold up real quick, there are a ton of things about this cutscene that either don't make sense or are unexplained. What happened to the rest of the royal family? Is this only Hyrule Castle being invaded? Or the entire kingdom of Hyrule? And why did Zelda choose to surrender and not fight by using her goddess powers within? <sighs> It just isn't explained fully. What is going on? Today, I thought it would be fun to do a full breakdown and analysis of sorts and explain the full story behind Zant's invasion on Hyrule, with a few mini theories as for the unexplained parts. As always, be sure to go grab yourself a snack or a drink and show me your drill worthy snacks on social media. And let's get into the full story behind Zant's Twilight invasion on the Kingdom of Hyrule. To begin with, when does this scene actually occur? We are told the story of the invasion by Princess Zelda when we first meet her early in the game within Twilight Infected Hyrule Castle, but when did the invasion itself happen? Well, believe it or not, it happened not long before Link meets Princess Zelda. At the beginning of the game, during the opening cutscene, we see a conversation between Link and Russell. In fact, there are multiple conversations between the pair in the beginning segment of the game that give us some insight to the invasion. Russell tells Link, I was supposed to deliver something to the royal family of Hyrule the day after tomorrow a task set to him by the mayor. However, he asks Link if he could deliver it instead. This initial quote tells us that to Russell and the mayor's knowledge, the royal family in Hyrule Castle are perfectly fine. We can assume regular visits are made to the royal family to both keep in touch and bring in goods. Even just the bi-weekly letter from the postman would do. I mean, he does a lot of running. The royal family and the mayor must have recently been in contact, as Russell mentions the mayor sent him this task, meaning a request set by the royal family to the mayor of Ordon Village. Russell even goes on to say how great the castle is and how large the community is out there. So right here, at the beginning, the invasion has not happened yet, as everyone is under the impression Hyrule Castle and Castle Town is absolutely fine. But it does happen soon. After the first 30, 40, well in Twilight Princess's case, 3 goddamn hours long tutorial, Ordon Village is invaded by Baldwins, including King Baldwin himself. This was part of the Twilight invasion. We know this because after the Baldwins invade and kidnap Link's friends and concussed Elia, he wakes up and heads for the exit, only to be greeted by a massive, dark, gloomy, suspenseful wall of Twilight matter. This is the Twilight Invasion. At this stage, Zant has already begun tearing through Hyrule Castle as the Twilight has spread as far as Ordon Village, which we can see on the map is far south from the castle itself, the place Zant was focused on, and Zant himself says during the invasion, Oh yes, a question for all the land and people of Hyrule. Implying by the stage of this breach on the throne room, the rest of Hyrule has already been seized. Anyway, after Link is grabbed into the black wall and dragged away by a shadow beast, he is dragged along the ground to the Hyrule Castle cellars, a Hyrule Castle now infected and taken over by Twilight. At this stage, Zant had already successfully seized the Kingdom of Hyrule, so the time of this invasion had to be shortly after the beginning of the game, but shortly after before Link's in the cellars, in that sort of weird time frame. This answers one of the questions brought up regarding the scene, its placement, but let's move on to the more debatable and dark questions regarding the invasion. As I mentioned in the intro, my main goal with this video is to clear up the main confusions and questions with this scene, and one of the questions I see a lot is, where was the rest of the royal family, or what happened to the rest of the royal family during the scene? To make references back to the scene easier, I will play the full scene for you, then begin to analyse and answer the questions. There will be timestamps if you already know the scene well or wish to skip over it.
Chills, man. Anyway, as you saw there, there was no sign of the royal family, aside from Princess Zelda, obviously. Breaking the invasion down from start to finish, we can see that at the very beginning, Princess Zelda and her royal knights are all set up and in positional format, meaning they likely know they are in for something big and have grouped up together to try and defend, rather than playing offensively, which you'd often expect with the royal family due to their size and strength as a unit. This means that this is the last stance, which is further backed up by Zant shortly. We see the knights bravely awaiting impact to then suddenly be struck by a wave of shadowy force breaching the throne room and knocking a few knights down. We then see shadow beasts begin to take on the knights, sprinting at them with pace and agility, with the beasts absolutely crushing them. Even in mass numbers, charging at once, the knights of Hyrule stood no chance, and considering these knights were assigned to the princess, we can assume that they are some of the best in the ranks. Even to be assigned to Hyrule Castle alone they must have been at least somewhat decent knights, but the twilight just tore right through them, choking the defense of Hyrule. Following this, the Shadow Beast stopped towards Princess Zelda, and the leader and mastermind behind this attack enters, Zant. He enters with almost a swagger of confidence, accompanied by his two personal Shadow Beasts, and gives Princess Zelda two options, surrender, or die, life or death. And after a moment of shock, Zelda drops her blade, signifying surrender. Not just surrender of herself, but the surrender of Hyrule. At this very moment, Hyrule was officially under the control of Zant and the Twilight. This is why we see all of Hyrule covered in darkness, and why in the game, Link must clear each area individually by collecting the Tears of Light and restoring each region. Now that we know exactly what happened, where was the royal family? Well, funny enough, the answer somewhat comes from Zan. During the invasion, right after Zan gives Zelda the option of surrender or die, he mentions something interesting. He says, oh yes, a question for all the land and people of Hyrule, implying that the rest of the land and its civilization has been seized, meaning Zelda is the only person left with the kind of authority to make this decision. This likely means that, unfortunately, Zan already took out the royal family, as whilst they were alive, they'd have higher authority than Princess Zelda, and they'd go to them to ask the question. Whilst her father the king would have had higher authority, Princess Zelda has more value in terms of power, the Triforce. That is exactly what Zan and Ganondorf are after, especially the power of having such a relic of an ability. That is why they went for Zelda, leaving her with the decision. My theory of the royal family being dead is even backed up by a later quote of Zant's. When Link and Midna venture into the Twilight Realm to take out Zan, right before a battle between the hero and villain begins, he says, and all of it was the fault of a useless do-nothing royal family that had resigned itself to this miserable half-existence. We also learned that Zant is angry at the goddesses connected to the royal family for sending him and his people to the Twilight Realm. This tells us that Zant still has a bad grudge against the royal family and the light world in general for sending him and his people into the Twilight Realm. This is actually looking like a case of matter of perspective on who is actually the evil one. From my point of view, royal family. Very evil. Well, then you are lost. Ganondorf also told Zant that anything he desires, he shall desire too. Combining powers, this could hint at them getting revenge for banishing Zant and his people away, and with this, it would also allow Ganondorf to get his hands on Princess Zelda and her slice of the cake, the Triforce. So, looking at the facts, Zelda was the only member left during the attack in the throne room, where normally the king and queen would be. We know Zant wanted revenge on the royal family and the light world in general, we know Ganondorf wanted Princess Zelda, and we know that normally Princess Zelda wouldn't have the authority to just surrender the kingdom, unless 
the hierarchy had fallen. Answering that first question, the royal family are dead, and people say Majora's mask is darker. But it still leaves another huge question. Why did Zelda surrender? I mean, yeah, any normal Hylian would, but Princess Zelda holds a piece of the Triforce, and at that, very powerful abilities with it. We even see her use them in the third phase of the final battle against Ganondorf when she saves Link and summons the light arrows from the spirits. What was stopping her from busting out the old goddess powers here? Well, my guess is that she knew the entire kingdom was already seized. She knew that even if she got past Zan, there would be an entire kingdom of Twilight, Shadow Beasts, and Ganondorf to take on. Something alone she wouldn't be able to manage. As previously mentioned, at this time, the Twilight had spread as far as Ordon Village, as we see from Link's point of view. Zelda had no chance, regardless of her goddess powers. So I hope that helps to clear up a few things about one of the biggest moments in Twilight Princess's story. This invasion occurred shortly after the beginning of the game. The royal family are dead due to a revengeful and anger-fueled Zan, and Zelda surrendered because regardless of her powers, she couldn't handle the powerful invasion and infection of Twilight. But hey, things don't need to be so doom and gloom. Keep yourself safe from dark Twilight invasions with your very own legendary shield. Mug from Zavi. Zavi is your new home for merchandise such as t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, posters, figurines, and so much more. And the super kind folks over at Zavi sent me over some of their products for their Zelda Day event, which was actually weeks ago, but uh, uh, I was busy replaying Twilight Princess for the hundredth time. Anyway, let's have a look at what they sent me. So, as you can see, I got myself an absolutely gorgeous Link statue, which will actually match my Zelda one. And my god, it's stunning and so, so detailed. I got a golden Zelda cartridge mug as well, which is also stunning and very shiny. Then there is the Triforce glass, which I can't wait to use whilst working on videos and at the dinner table. And of course, the clothing. I'm in love with my new sweatshirt and t-shirt. I love the unique designs like this, as I've got to let everybody know that I'm a Zelda fan. <laughs> I can guarantee you guys that these products are very high quality and very awesome. And if you'd like to get some for yourself, be sure to use my codes HYRULE10 for 10% off storewide purchases and HYRULE20 for 20% off all clothing purchases. The link to Zavi will be below. Thanks a ton for checking out the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for future Zelda content. What do you think about the invasion of Twilight and Twilight Princess? Did Zant brutally murder the royal family? Did Zelda make the correct decision? And or is there something else going on here? Leave a comment below with your thoughts and let's get a discussion going. Huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for your incredibly generous support. It really does help me to make these videos week in week out. And special thanks to new patrons Guryuk, Jason Green, Flefwin, and Aaron Nichols. I'm sorry if I pictured any of them, I tried my best. If you'd like to support the channel via Patreon and get your name at the end of all of my videos, a shout out upon joining, and more, then check out the page through the card in the top right or link below. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.